Morning, Alex. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, oh, oh. Um, funnily enough, I was sitting here working on some artwork. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm just about to finish up. But yeah. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I've had a, a two full weeks of interviews, but uh, this is the last day before a, a bit of time off. So, yeah. okay. Um, um, so you know about any music artwork. I don't need to do any introductions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I've been uh, following you guys, I think, since you started publishing stuff. Oh, excellent. Like 10 years ago or uh, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I was, yeah, I was, I was uh, glad that someone had that idea to focus a little bit on that side of it all here. Um, yes, uh, of course. I mean, my interest is obviously metal, uh, art, and also the experience, you know, like the lyrics, the live shows, and, you know, like uh, metal as a culture, rather than just uh, something that uh, just happens in the boundaries of uh, a, a, a culture. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's an idea that we have been subscribing to from day one with Watain. I think we've always kind of aimed for that kind of totality yes yes rather than rather than just you know playing rock and roll and that's that nothing wrong with that but it's it's a different approach absolutely absolutely i mean uh, the the, uh, the working experience is uh different <laughs> than uh, your average metal band um because you guys uh um feels like you you really mean what you do and um, whereas for a lot of the bands it's just a show uh, which is still good, obviously. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but anyway, I mean, that's how it feels to me. And that's why, uh, even though uh, sometimes uh, the music is a bit too much, um, but the attraction is still there. You know, the cu cu curiosity is still there, which is good. You know, it's, it's very, um, it's good. It's good that, that it's there. Um, so what are you working at the moment? I have merchandise and stuff like that? Oh, I am actually working on a uh, tour poster for our European tour that's going to be announced on Monday. And I'm doing a few touch-ups because that's how I, <laughs> that's how I work. I finish something and then two days away from when it's going to be uh, announced, I go back and start working on details again because I'm stupid. But that's how I, yeah, that's that's how I usually end up working. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I do, I do all of our tour posters. I do all of our merchandise uh, for this latest album. I I did all the artwork, so, so it's a big, uh, it's a big thing for me. Uh, it, it, I, I, and, and it's a passion rather than a must, you know, I, I could of course ask anyone, there's plenty of good artists out there, but I, for me, it's like the, uh, <laughs> one of the parts of, of doing the thing that I, that I just really enjoy. And I, the one thing which, um, um, I've noticed on this release, which I love the name, by the way, uh, is I from from memory I think is the a movie the Michelangelo movie. Well, I really I I didn't know that. All right, okay. Last it it was it that was that was a pure coincidence. But when I yeah when I started googling it a bit to see if any other uh, anyone else had used it, I, I yeah I came across that there was actually also a Man of War song with that that has um, like the Agony and Ecstasy of Achilles or Achilles Agony and Ecstasy or something like that, but. That that makes some terrible kind of sense, I guess. The, the two words are, are um, um, I mean, you could say that they're opposites, but at the same time, they're related, right? <laughs> because, uh, um, you know, when um, in a in a creative sort of process, there is a, a pleasure, but there is also an agony. I think you're uh, putting your finger on 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 really on the point here, Anna. and and. Uh, uh, to, yeah, exactly. They are sort of opposites, but they are also in, in, in trim, intrinsically connected somehow. And uh, and uh, I, I wanted to underline the fact that they are both there, you know, because a lot of metal bands, I think, tend to 
to play on just one end of the emotional spectrum, like, you know, how emo bands used to do sad shit or how uh, how a lot of like raw black metal bands only play on, you know, violence and, and, and aggression and so on. And, and I, I mean, I have nothing against that, but as an artist, I, I, I am always, I always see it as the, the, the most um, rewarding challenge to kind of take in a little bit more, you know, to, to, to add, to, to get a little, a little bit of emotional dynamics in there. I think that's the music that I, uh, that I feel the strongest for that has really stayed with me throughout my life is, is music that is a bit like emotionally dynamic and you know, sort of dramatic music you know, that, that has both highs and lows. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that that was kind of the the idea with the title to to underline this kind of duality, and and I see it as as two poles on a magnet in a way. Like you, the, the, you know how there is a charge between those two poles, and I, I think that the music and the the work and the art of Atene is kind of that charge. It's 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 the, it's the it's a magical charge happening between those two emotional extremes if, if that makes sense oh yes absolutely and uh, to be honest with you um uh, one thing i've noticed with a lot of the more established bands uh, is that you know black metal bands is that uh, there is not so much uh, full-on uh, blasphemy and uh, you know insults uh, to religion or to whatever uh, people have uh, as beliefs uh, some bands still do like uh, beam uh, but it's fine obviously if that's what they want to do but in my opinion, in your case, especially with this release, um, it feels like you're broaden, broadening your, uh, your spectrum of uh, emotions and, and go to whatever extreme that, that might take. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love that because sometimes, uh, you know, like blasphemy and all that, uh, you know, yes, it's, it's an exercise. Some people like it, some people don't. But it is, it is very limited. And also, it, is, um, it is just ends there. It doesn't go anywhere. And so, I mean, this is, this is what I was, um, what went through my mind when I first wrote, saw this release. Right. Well, that, that's, uh, that, that's a cool take on it. And, and uh, you know, I, th I think I agree with you to, to a certain extent, I would say. I, I, uh, I think by now, uh, after 20 plus years, we've kind of established on what side Botain stands on when it comes to, you know, the dualistic worldview of, of the God on one side and the devil on the other, which I which I find is a quite inspiring uh, worldview to to work with uh, artistically. Uh, and uh, and uh, Botain and black metal as, as a as a culture has always represented the devil. It is the thorny, uncomfortable uh, presence in in people's lives you know that that they that they sort of have to uh, deal with well whether they want it or not and and uh and of course um the blasphemy and and like the 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 this the 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 enemy stance so well, black metal has always been quite central but but i think with batain that is quite like i said it's quite established now where where we stand in all those things so so i think even though we don't deal with that uh, in uh, i mean we, we we do deal with that on the new album also but 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 not not in full perhaps and uh, but i think we use that more as a foundation now and 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 uh, and that's that's a very like liberating way of, of of working and and a privilege that you have after having done something for a long time that you stand on on your own uh artistic platform and you can use that as a fundament and then you can do whatever the fuck you want you know and, and but 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 people will still be able to tell that it's you because you have your history and you have your yeah um your uh, your expression that 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 you can't really you know provide or, or that, that 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 will always be there so so yeah, I, I think that I took the liberty now to to uh, to expand a little bit on, on on the on the subjects that I'm writing about. I I wrote pretty much about whatever I wanted to write about, but 
like I said, always from a from a Latin perspective, and always like firmly rooted in where where we come from. Yeah, I think that's uh, honestly one of the more uh, like enjoyable creative processes I have gone through when when when, when I when I kind of uh, established that that that's what that was the way that I that I was going to do it this time. It's kind of uh, yeah, liberating. Very nice. And um, I see in um, um, in the artworks and the packaging, there's a lot of, um, you know, like uh, uh, Sanskrit, I believe it is, uh, you know, the lettering as well as... Yeah. Um, there, there, there's a, f a few different alphabets in there, but but uh, I think the one that you're referring to is uh, uh, is Thebal, is, is, the, is the one that is... Uh, uh, that is the most that that we use the most, and Theban is a it's a, like a, to put it simple, like a medieval uh, witch alphabet that was used to seal magical pacts and to like to hide meanings from from from, from whoever that read it. it it's uh, it's basically the, the Roman alphabet, but but uh, with with other symbols. Okay, you know, like uh, in um and. Um because uh, I'm, I also have an interest uh, in the occult and things like that. And the, but the one thing which, um, 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 like in, the, in, I'm Italian, right? So in Italian, uh, when you say occult, is is often obviously referred to something which is uh, hidden, but also something which corrupts. Which corrupts? Yes, which corrupts. Interesting. Okay. That, that's that's the, that, the literal meaning of the word. S something that uh, hides and something that corrupts. Yeah, and in the English translations, I haven't found this sort of dif this uh, differentiation nowhere. Yeah, uh, because I mean, I mean, in a philosophical theological uh, sense, uh, the work of the devil is the work that corrupts and lies. I mean, it's, it's the literal translation of the word Satan, yeah. the, the so one that corrupts. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a, you you could you could say that it's like a term coined by. Christians, or or a, a term coined by people who sure, but yeah, who didn't like magic. Sure, I mean, I'm sure you can trace it back to the um, Greeks or the Romans. I'm sure, right. um, yeah. which was a pagan world, so it's not even Christian. But well, I think it's I think it's a, a, a quite a beautiful uh, meaning uh, for, for the word. I think it makes makes perfect sense in a way. I mean, well, of course it makes sense because that's what it means. Yeah, 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 but I mean, but I mean, like that that uh, that the occult is able to corrupt, but but uh, a more, I mean, that uh, corruption is is probably a negation. Uh, it, it, it's not in a negative sense, but you could also say transform, change, and and uh, that instead of corrupt, I mean, to the, the corruption of, of of something is 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 an inevitable change in something, but but perhaps a a unwanted change or a negative change or a, I suppose like but but uh but yeah I mean the, the or occultism is really the the art of, of being able to to change the course of things absolutely but I think in in this context the the word means um to corrupt against nature rather than um according to nature's laws exactly so right. so so that, that could that, that's why as a corruption because it's not uh, in line with the, let's say, the framework of how nature operates, yeah. is against it. Yeah, exactly. Nature or perhaps religion. I mean, it 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 it, it of course depends on who uh, on who's speaking. But but uh, I mean, I I believe I I I, I believe that magic and, and the occult is a part of nature, and, and that that the the changes that that uh, that they can. Uh, that it can produce and and that it, that it can or uh, that it can be responsible for is or natural in, in that sense but but it depends on who you ask i mean uh, so someone who who believes that that god governs uh, everything that that should, that occurs in nature yeah that that person would of course think that it's a a corruption or a distortion of, of of reality in that sense, and I I like to think about it that way. I mean, I, I think there you, you must have a, a sort of animistic uh, 
approach like you, you have to you have to approach uh, nature as your uh, counterpart a little bit when 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 you when you uh, work with this with these kind of things when when you when you are uh, when you are forcing change upon it you know you, you are you are acting as a as an agent of, of of something else something external is a bit like uh, the title of the album is both the agony and the ecstasy yes exactly and uh and yeah i i see i see this dualism everywhere uh, and uh and i i embrace it i i think i think ultimately i think uh i think that that magic occurs and that that great things occur that magic that music and and culture and and art and and the great uh, revolutionary ideas they come from friction they come from opposites they come from uh, they they come from the meeting between high and low, but, but the, the meeting between light and dark and the day and night. I always been fascinated with this twilight ideas and and uh, and, uh, and what, what what happens when 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 two opposites kind of are clash together. Yeah. I I believe that, that that's where where the truly great works uh, have their origin. And how this did this uh, passion started. Um, you know, looking back in your life, you know, even before Wetain, did you have any moments that uh, you know you realized that uh, you know this stuff is important to you and the, you know will guide you you know for 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 your rest of your life? Because I mean, this is now I believe uh, an important part of who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's it's still quite hard to pinpoint. Well, that I think it's something that it's easier to say than by if someone was ever going to write my biography, it's probably easier for that person to to answer that question than for me myself. But because uh, uh, I don't really, I don't really uh, scrutinize my my life history in that sense. I just live. I try to live just here and now. But uh, but uh, the discovery of music was was uh, life-changing to me uh, it became everything to me when i when i uh, got into music it, i didn't have any other interest and uh when uh, when that focused in more on heavy metal and later also black and death metal i i um, yeah, i also became interested in every everything else we were talking in the in the beginning of our conversation we were talking about you know the totality of music and and uh and i think uh i embraced that uh, the most when i started to get into yeah more more dramatic kind of expressions like black and death metal i was i was really taken by the the aesthetics and the ideas and and uh, and the, the messages that, that that was behind the music, which which I I couldn't really find the same way in, for example, Metallica or or the stuff that I listened to when I was younger. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's that that was definitely uh, uh, that that was the way it went, <laughs> so to say. And and uh, and also, I mean, when you are in your adolescence, like 13, 14, and and you and you stand before uh, uh, the the monster of heavy metal culture, you know that the the adventurous wilderness of of, of the of the underground uh, stretching out before you. And I mean, come on, you know how can you not? How can you not? How can you resist that? So uh, I, I I think that was that was uh, very formative for me too to just face that and head on into it just with with a with a great hunger yes i must say that uh, um when i was um uh, 14 and uh, i was introduced you know by my brother and friends yeah to music are you not? i'm 50, nearly 50 49 I'm cool all right and when when i first saw you know the artwork the shows man it was like a, it, it's like you taking a trip yeah like everything was so overwhelming yeah like really strong i mean comparison yeah. to what um, i had at the time because i was into like pop music obviously like right but you know I, I, in the 80s pop music was the pesh mode and duran duran which is still cool 
Um, did, did you live in, in Italy at the time? Or? Yes, yes, uh, I'm from Sicily. So I'm, okay, okay, cool. So there was a scene there um, at that time, already established. So it was you know, just in a couple of months, I, I knew everyone and I was just uh, tape trading with everyone else. Yeah, uh, sounds like a dream, right? Like a different kind of reality almost. Sure, for sure. I mean, again, like I remember seeing the first Iron Maiden show. Again, it was like taking a trip. It was so overwhelming, so strong, yeah. but but not scary. Um, just you know, just it draw, draws you in. Yeah, uh, yeah. It it it's uh, it's uh, it's no wonder why you know, but why 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 grown ups have been a little bit like worried about heavy metal culture. If you think about how how what it really does to people. I mean, I, 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 I totally think that it's, that it's to, to their greatest extent, just a, po a, a positive thing, like an empowering thing in a uplifting thing to have in one's life. But, but it's very, it's very direct. It's a very like primal force at work. I think it, it's something that really uh, like devours you. If, if you're, if you're that kind of person, if you're inclined to, to this kind of thing. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely relate to that. Just it's like another world opening up that you just want to have everything of, you know, and especially that 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 feeling of like you're watching it from the outside, but it goes pretty fast until you are in it. Yes, yes, you yes. know that that it's you, you're not. That's that's the cool thing with, with with that kind of music that it kind of welcomes you in. You know, it's like it it it, it speaks to sides of you that you maybe didn't really know that you had when you were that young, but apparently, you know, you, there, there's so much to be discovered in yourself, I think, but by, by being introduced to, to such like powerful things. And um, the one thing which I find it very, very strange is that, uh, you know, like when I talk to people about this stuff and I do interviews with all kinds of bands from any country in the world, they, mm -hmm. no, we all have the same experience. Yeah, it's really bizarre. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know, it is a very universal language. I think having having that all, I, it 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 pertains to such like uh, primal things within within man, like you know, hardship and struggle and adventure and love and hate. All these things are kind of put to the max, you know, and and uh, and uh, I there are the, 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 there aren't really any other music genres like that i think yeah that 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 are so like allowing in, in emotional excess yeah uh, it's it's that's that's uh why why then in, in in metal that's like it's encouraged to feel you're encouraged to feel strong you know it's like in you know look at a crowd at the at the maiden show and compare it to a patch of boys show i mean like the metal comes are <laughs> they are emotional passionate people you know and and, and and they and there is there is nothing to hide there there is nothing to like be ashamed of it's it's the opposite like if, if you don't feel then then you're not then you're a poser you know you should you should feel a lot you know and that that's that's the that but that's one of the reasons i think why why you know it's it's as it's it's been as uh, strikingly popular in in Argentina as it has in Norway as it has in in uh, in Australia or Japan for that matter. You know, it's like it's it's everywhere. And um, sorry, what, why, while I was listening to you, I was looking at the more uh, about the the cover and the artwork. Mm -hmm. And I was listening, obviously, uh, but uh, you know the the gold, the red, and the black together. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, so beautiful, <laughs> right? I, you know, I had this, I had this color combination in mind for so many years, yeah. But but I hadn't really found like uh, the the uh, the the perfect design for it yet. But I had something in the back of my head all the time, like how the, how to use that. So I'm I'm really not now when I took upon myself to to do the. To do the artwork by myself this time, I was like, "Fuck it, now is the time." Now, 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 I have to use this colors. Actually, it's, I, 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 the in the end, I ended up on the actual release, which I haven't seen yet. I haven't had it in my hands yet. <clears throat> but uh, I went for like a copper, 
uh, copper rather than gold, you know, like uh, kind of a oh, yes. like a reddish gold. Yes, 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 yes. So, so yeah, I I can't wait to to see how it turned out. It's like I have a constant like a stomach ache until <laughs> until I have it in my hands. And because uh, I'm a, I'm a designer myself, and so yeah. so I you know all the books, all the magazine, everything I design everything myself, and so so I spend the uh, time trying to find the right red, the, the right gold. Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, it's like uh, because. It, it, the tonal the tones it needs to go together otherwise uh, it just doesn't look right so yeah so i'm sure you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah to a hundred percent i mean i'm i always see the coloring part because i work a lot in in uh, just monochromes I, I don't work so much in gray skins at all i work more like a uh, you know like with stamps or with <laughs> like a screen screen printing approach to to design in general uh and uh I always see the coloring part as like the uh, f first I design and I d design everything in black and white and then I color it and, and that's if you have a really good design uh, I find that that, uh, that I mean the, the coloring is always su super important I, I I totally agree but but I also find that it, it's cool to just fuck around with yes, yes. Try different color combinations afterwards you know I love, for example, a lot of these old, like '80s uh, bootleg uh, uh, cassettes from from the East Europe. For example, they had they looked great. The design was like total metal, but the colors were always a bit off. You know, like some weird yellow, some weird like pink, pink instead of red, like light blue instead of dark blue, and stuff like that. And and I I have a soft spot for those kind of like yeah and perfections yeah. imperfections yeah. Uh, i mean classic example would be like uh, the first mayhem lp that, which turned out pink instead of red or the first battery lp which turned out uh, yellow instead of gold and uh, stuff like that i haven't really that that's like my that it's almost like a design perversion but it is <laughs> saint Vitus um also uh cover is pink instead of red yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, I love um, and these imperfections and also things which are not expected to to happen and they happen, and then yeah, and they eventually form a pattern and they become a style. I love that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it's, it's like um, uh, I love uh, leaving a little bit room for mistakes in general. That's one of that's one of the ways that I kind of work with with. Uh, uh, with with my artwork, I I I always want to have some parts that I'm not really in control over myself. But that can mean, for example, uh, uh, like uh, printing, uh, like when I do text, for example, I usually do the, I I do I can do the text on a computer, but I print it out, I wrinkle the paper, I paint a little bit on the on the letters, and then I scan it in again, and that that like hands-on process is always always includes you know a few things that you cannot really control the, the uh, control at the at the, at the smallest detail level there's always a bit of dirt there's always a little bit of you know some wrinkles that are more wrinkled than they should be and so on and i i yeah imperfections are super big part of of my way of working with with design eric uh Claire told me that uh, um, you have we I can we can't go over the time, so I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time. And that's that's cool. Yeah, exactly. What where are we? We are. I mean, I can I can continue talking until tomorrow. I, I'm enjoying. Oh, yes. It's is yes. an awesome conversation. Uh, yeah, I was I was really happy when I saw that uh, that we were doing an interview with you guys. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. I, I was planning even to have uh, Watain on the cover of the new magazine because the the, the magazine that we had unfortunately well, we had to stop it because the distribution company went bankrupt oh wow so because yeah. of the covid um but it's okay i mean it's a new beginning <laughs> yeah 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 exactly i mean it's it's it, it looks like we're 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 at the time when we beginning just a just a city me i know it was it was an experience um we, re uh, we released about 16 issues yeah right you were pretty you were very productive there <laughs> thank you uh, and in just a, a few years we have now 
25, 20, 23, 25 book releases. Yeah, that, that one that you sent the video over looked really cool. It's like you couldn't like it back. <laughs> Did you, I was like, what kind of music can I put on the background? It, uh, it's a genius. I, I love it. It's re- like uh, so this, this kind of uh, like children's music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's really cool. Uh, no, because I listen a lot, a lot of children's music because I have two children. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Uh, some of my favorite uh, composers are always referring to to uh, to children's music as one of their main inspirations. So maybe I should maybe I should look into that a little bit. But some of them are wicked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always musicians who do it. You know, it's not like it's not just thrown together. I guess it's. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is. A, um, I'm sure they don't mean to be wicked, but somehow, if you put it in a different context, it just sounds odd. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, and it can create really good contrast also, like the way that you used it in the video. Now it becomes almost like a spooky, you know, or like, what the fuck is going on? Like an 80s Dario Gento horror film. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, I hope, um, you know, oh, yes, of course, once the magazine is released, I'll send you a copy and I'll send you a few, a few other things as well. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. I don't know. I think I have your address uh, from uh, your management. Yeah, exactly. I I gave uh, I gave them like my home address in case uh, like some magazine wanted to wanted to uh, send an issue, and I love that. I mean, I try to keep. I, I'm a sucker for for uh, the, the actual physical. Of course, I send you as much stuff as I can. Let's <laughs> let, let, let's do that. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. Uh, you know, I love I love you guys. I think. Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't share the philosophy, but that's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. But I, I love the whole the whole experience. I think, I think it's uh, not many bands can pull it off. Thank you, thank you. Well, we we uh, we work hard to to pull it off. <laughs> and, and and also, again, I don't want to take too much of your time. I, I don't want to make names, but like you can, uh, in my opinion, it's nice. It's good to see bands going to this extreme, but also have some kind of um, um, how you call it class? Yeah, I think class is quite important actually. Um, because you know, like uh, you know, like for example, Behemoth, you know, like after after a while, it's tiring all this blasphemous stuff because it's just you know, like all right, you know, you you've done that, we get the point. <laughs> it, it it just it just it just becomes too, like vulgar. Yeah, I I, I hear you, and I, and I think that uh, yeah. I think ultimately it, it's it's good that there are uh, different facets even within this genre. Sure, know, sure, sure. Like the, like the people people who like that kind of stuff can listen to that, and people who who want something maybe a little bit more philosophically deep or whatever can go in other directions. You know, so so yeah. I mean, I see it like they they sweep their side of the street, and we. We make ours a bit dirtier, but <laughs> I, I love the metaphor. Yeah, yeah, cool. Hey, uh, come on. I got to run there. The other guys are are riding me now. So come. Uh, Thank you again, talk to you, Alex. Thank you, Eric, and we speak again. Thanks a lot for for having us. No problem. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. Cheers. Bye. <clears throat> hey, folks. Thanks for watching this podcast. If you enjoyed this interview, please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends, your family, and your cat. And stay awesome. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to check out our store at www.headingmusicartwork.com. Ciao for now. Oh. Previously.